Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you very much uh, to have been here to such a splendid exhibition. For me, it's an honor, and also I'm very pleased to work with Brett and all the staff to present you very beautiful items uh, that were part of the patrimony of the Roman Empire, of the first people who united Europe many, many centuries ago. The only one for the moment I remember. But So, uh, I am a very terrible man dealing with military equipment, but I'm not so terrible. I mean, in some way, I like military equipment, but I'm a peaceful man. And I would like to present you such splendid helmet. I will be very short, don't worry. That is a magnificent example of uh, the called Roman sport mask helmets. Why sport? Because many times ago, when uh, Russell Robinson was the conservator of the armory in London, he found a series of mask helmets. It means, uh, in Greek we say, Cassidia aftoprosopa. It means uh, helmets with the face, uh, literally representing various and different kinds of faces. Some of them very similar, just an impersonal mask, but some of them, and there are only existing three in the world, one in Stockard in Germany, the other one from Kostol in Yugoslavia, today in the National Museum of Beograd, and the third you have in front of your eyes, representing not only Ha, just a helmet, but a portrait. It means that uh, this kind of helmet was done for a real person or wanted to represent a real person. Which was uh, the meaning of the mask helmets? They were used both in battle to terrorize the enemies. You can imagine a uh, Roman cavalry and full armor arriving against the barbarians uh, with uh, the face covered by some, some, some shining helmet in bronze, uh, in brass, uh, in silver, with coat of silver, and uh, uh, full armor with the Medusa, the famous Gorgon, with uh, shining eyes made of diamonds, uh, of some other precious stones, uh, terrifying. In the same times, they were used in the so-called Ippica Gymnasia. There were some like sport made by the Romans, where two teams of cavalrymen were facing each other, like in exercitation, let's say training. One personifying the Amazons, the mythical Amazons, and the other the Greeks. So the ones personifying the Greeks with male face and the one personifying the Amazons with uh, female face. This one, instead, is very particular because, as you can see, it's not only a helmet, but the face of an African princess. Why African princess in the Roman Empire? But first of all, because the Roman Empire was a, a multi-ethnical empire. It wasn't problems for anyone inside to be Roman citizen of any color difference or nation. In a period in which the helmet was probably produced of the time of Trajan and Adrian, in which the empire was uh, reaching the apex of the power. And this helmet can be the representation of a real person. We know from the sources, from Cassio Dio, from uh, other sources, that one of the most important collaborators of the emperor Trajan during the Dutch and wars was uh, the Numidian princess Lucius Quieta. Lucius Quieta was the king of Mauritania, vassal of Rome, but in the same time commander of the auxilia, the Numidian Moorish auxilias inside the Roman army. It was a very important man because not only he helped uh, the Romans to fight against the Dutch, and so you can see the image of the Trajan column when the uh, mass of uh, Mauritanian cavalrymen are attacking uh, and throwing uh, javelins against the Dacians in route, but also in the Quito's war was uh, a very important element uh, for Trajan and Adrian for the repression of the revolt of the Jewish revolt in Alexandria that costed the life to more than 500,000 persons at that time, so you can imagine. Lucius Quieta was a very important man, and probably because he was too much important, the emperor Hadrian 
ordered to be killed. But it is possible that in the moment of the apex, some image, some face was of the el mask helmets were modeled upon him. And this one is maybe the only one we have in the world at the moment that can be such kind of helmet. You see that the mouth is not open. It means that it wasn't finished. The helmet was worked, probably destined to be finished with the bowl. Part of the bowl could be also preserved. But the mouth was not open. It was necessary to be open because the brass of the helmet is very thin. And the Roman fitted inside it with a lining to put on the face. But they need, of course, the breath. And not only from the nose, but only from the mouth. Also from the mouth. So in this, we can see that the mouth is still closed. Probably the helmet was uh, then not finished. And maybe because it was this damnatio memoriae, as the Romans said, of the princess Lucio Spieta. We are in front of a magnificent exemplar. I think when I saw, when they sent to me, I was jumping on my seat. Okay, I'm jumping on the seat because I, was, I am fanatic of the Romans. But from the other side, it is really a very splendid specimen. As you can see, all around you have beautiful specimens of everything, not only weapons, but uh, uh, in any corner of this room you can see magnificent pieces. This is one of the most beautiful. This is one that deserve a conference only by Z that I will not do now, don't worry. And in the same time, it is something that shows the quality and the expertise of the people presenting you the auction tomorrow. I think it's enough for everyone. Thank you very much.